All right, so if this small gear right here spins at 300 RPMs, and that is revolutions per minute, in other words, this small gear is going to turn 300 times in one minute, but this small gear is driving this big gear. And what we want to figure out is how many RPMs, how many revolutions in one minute will the big gear make if it's being driven by the small gear at 300 RPMs. And uh, these two gears have a gear ratio of 12 to 1. All right, so what we have here really is a simple math question about gears and gear ratios. Now, just in case you don't know what a gear is, they are mechanical devices that effectively look like these things right here. This is my little depiction of two gears. And you find these uh, things uh, in uh, like engines and clocks, but hopefully you know what a gear ratio is. And uh, so this is our problem. Now we do have a multiple choice question. And remember what we're trying to determine is how many RPMs the big gear will turn if it's being driven by the small gear and the small gear is going 300 RPMs and the gear ratio is 12 to one between these two gears. But let's take a look at our answers. So A is 15, B is 20, C is 25, and D is 30. All right, now feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll share the correct answer in just one second. Then of course, I'm gonna walk through step-by-step step how to solve this interesting math problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so again, here is our problem. We are talking about gear ratios and uh, probably some of you are saying, I never even heard of this, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Well, I kind of uh, gave you a visual representation of this same problem uh, and I'm gonna show you this problem in a kind of a written form, all right? So hopefully I, uh, in the way I kind of explained it here will allow you to solve the problem. But let's take a look at the correct answer. The correct answer is C, 25 RPMs. Now, if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face, an A plus, a 100%, and a certificate of excellence because you appear to be a certified professional expert in the area of gear ratios. And from a mathematical standpoint, uh, you are an expert in ratios and proportions. Now, you may not even uh, understood that you were using ratios and proportions to figure this problem out, but that's really what it comes down to to get the right answer. But uh, if you just did some math and you got you know, the correct result, well, that's fantastic, but we're going to learn a, th a thing or two about this word right here, ratios. All right, so here is the uh, text version or the written version of the same problem. Now, I wanted to show you kind of a visualization of the problem so you can kind of get interested uh, you know, in solving it. But let me go ahead and read the actual problem so you would see it uh, typically written like this, like on a math test. So it says uh, two gears have a gear ratio of 12 to one. The little gear turns at 300 RPMs. What is the RPMs of the big gear? Okay, so we have this lovely math word problem. And uh, what we want to do here is kind of visualize what's going on. Now, if you don't know what a gear is or gear ratio is, you know, you're going to have a tough time solving this problem. But let's suppose you ran across this problem for the first time. Uh, remember a couple things here. One, we have a multiple choice question. And two, we have a word problem. So read a problem at least three times before you start doing anything. But again, if you don't even know what a gear is or a gear ratio, well, you just have to simply do what? Just take a guess. Never ever leave a math question in the blank. And uh, you might say, well, I don't know, maybe I'll just do like 12 times, you know, I'll do something with 12 and 30. And if you kind of play around with these numbers uh, and you get 25, well, that is the correct answer. Okay, so if you're going to take a guess, try to, you know, um, have a reasonable guess, right? Just don't take a blind uh, guess. But the worst thing you could do is leave a math question blank. Never, ever do that unless you get a penalty for the wrong answer. And that can be the case on some exams like the SAT. 
All right, so let's go ahead and get into the actual mathematics of this problem. And uh, here again is our problem. And what we want to do is uh, create a little sketch of what's going on. Now, of course, I showed you a nice image, but that's not going to always be the case when you face a problem like this. So let's say, again, on a math test or a quiz. So you want to uh, draw two gears, right? We want to just kind of sketch out two gears. And then we need to kind of figure out or um, understand what a gear ratio is. So we have two gears and the uh, gear ratio is 12 to one. So what does that mean? Well, let's just uh, kind of sketch out two gears here and the gear ratio is 12 to one. Now, uh, one gear is a small gear and the other gear is a big gear. Now this is my little sketch of uh, two gears. Now let's just kind of think about it, right? If I said we have a gear ratio of 12 to one and I have a small gear and I have a big gear. And uh, let's just think about the small gear. Which gear is going to turn more in one minute? Okay. Well, hopefully you can say, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I think this thing is going to have to spin a lot more to make this big thing, uh, you know, do one revolution. And you would be correct, right? So, you know, that kind of makes sense. So we kind of need to understand what a gear ratio is. So a gear ratio of 12 to 1 means that the small gear, okay, is going to have to turn 12 times to make the big gear a complete one revolution, okay? So we can just kind of maybe assign, uh, you know, or a label this gear as the small gear and this gear here as the big gear. All right, so that is what a gear ratio is. Now we need to go ahead and get into this problem. And because we are talking about um, this word ratio, we need to understand what this word means in mathematics. So a ratio is effectively a fraction. Okay, now there's some technical um, distinctions about what a ratio is versus a rate. But basically, uh, you can kind of think of a ratio as a fraction. But what we want to do here is when you see the word ratio in a math problem, you want to think of this other word called a proportion. And I'm going to get into that right now. So here is our ratio, right? So we want to think about a fraction. Now, what kind of fraction? Well, we're comparing a big gear and a small gear. Now, notice uh, that I'm writing this ratio this way, 1 to 12. Now, this uh, notation, this colon right here, is another way to express um, uh, the word 2 when we're talking about ratio. So this is a 1 to 12 ratio. And what are we comparing? Well, we have a fraction here, and we're comparing how many times the big gear will turn uh, to the small gear, right? So the big gear is going to make one uh, uh, revolution or, yeah, one turn effectively for every time the, the small gear turns 12 times. Well, that's a really bad way of saying that. Basically, the small gear has got to turn 12 times to make the big gear turn once. All right, so this is our ratio, 1 to 12 ratio. But now that we have this ratio, what we want to do is set up a proportion, okay? So the question is, let's go back to the question. So now that we understand um, what a gear ratio is, the little gear, little gear, excuse me, turns 300 RPMs. What is the RPMs of the big gear? So we know how many times the little gear is actually turning. We want to know how many times the big gear will turn. And what we're going to need to do is set up a proportion. All right, so this is what we have. Matter of fact, let me just center this a bit. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is set up this proportion. Now, what is a proportion? A proportion is two equal fractions. So if I have the fraction one half, can you think of another fraction that's equal to one half? Hopefully, it said, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, how about four over eight? Indeed, that's a good uh, choice. It could be 5 over 10. It could be 3 over 6. It doesn't make a difference. But by definition, a proportion is two equal fractions. Now, proportions are awesome because uh, when you have a proportion set up, you can use a property called the cross product to solve proportion problems. And that's what we have here. So the cross product means that uh, when we kind of multiply crossways on a proportion, uh, the cross products are going to be equal. Okay, so let me just show you this here. So four times, uh, two times four, excuse me, is eight, and one times eight is also eight. So eight is equal to eight. So if you remember that a proportion 
is two equal fractions and the cross products are equal, well, then you can solve any uh, proportion rate or ratio problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up two uh, equal fractions. So remember, we have this gear ratio. So the big gear is going to turn, make one turn for every 12 turns a small gear is making. So this is our 1 to 12 gear ratio. But we know that the small gear is turning at 300 RPMs. So we're looking to determine how many RPMs is the big gear turning uh, uh, when the small gear is going 300 RPMs, right? So this is what we're looking for, but we do know that whatever the answer is here for the big gear, it's in proportion to the gear ratio of 1 to 12. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. Now, when you're setting up proportions, we have to be very careful because the numerator and denominator um, have to be the same in these fractions. So over here, we have these two equal fractions. The numerator is the number of revolutions the big gear is going to turn, and the denominator is the number of re uh, revolutions the small gear is going to turn. All right, so right now, uh, all we need to do is solve this proportion problem using some basic algebra and the cross product. All right, so let's go to take that next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't you just love the way I kind of just interrupt these uh, little videos? You might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, you know, I know you're going to just ramble here for a minute or two because I've seen your other videos. Just hurry up with the solution. Yes, yes, I've already subscribed. Listen, if you are a subscriber, thank you so much. I definitely appreciate it because I need your help, okay? I'm trying to grow my YouTube channel as large as possible because the more I grow it, the more people I'm able to help. And that's why I make these videos. So um, the best way to support me in terms of uh, YouTube is simply to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you can get my latest videos. Now, um, in the description, you're going to find a few things. Uh, you're going to find links to my main, uh, full main math courses. Now, what I do on YouTube is kind of like little tutorial uh, problems and things like that. I love uh, teaching on YouTube because it's uh, fairly informal for me. But uh, if you truly need help in uh, mathematics or if you really want me to be your math teacher and you want my best full comprehensive instruction, then check out the links in the description, which would include my most uh, popular math courses. I have a ton of other courses, but you can find all the information in the description. Also, uh, don't miss out on uh, maybe picking up up, uh, some of my study notes as well. Okay, so there's a link down there uh, to pick up some study notes if you like, you know, printable type of information. But uh, anyways, let's get back to this problem because all we need to do is solve this lovely proportion. All right, so we have a gear ratio of 1 to 12, right? So uh, the big gear is going to turn one time for every small time, uh, for every 12 times the small gear is going to turn. So we're looking for how many times the big gear is going to turn if that small gear turns 300, time, uh, 300 times. So what we have here is a proportion, right? So we want to be really accurate with the words and terminology that we're using. Gear ratio, ratio implies a fraction. And if you're thinking ratios, well, you want to set up a proportion and use the cross product. All right, so let's go ahead and do this simple algebra. So we're going to cross multiply 12 times x is 12x, 1 times 300 is 300, and now all we need to do is solve for x. So we're just simply going to divide both sides of the equation by 12. 300 divided by 12 is 25, so 25 RPMs, right? So the big gear will turn 25 revolutions per minute if the small gear turns uh, 300 revolutions per minute. And uh, this is the same proportion as 1 to 12. All right, so hopefully you found this problem interesting. And I tried to make these problems enticing. And in this particular um, you know, situation, I wanted to give you a nice visual. Okay, So I wanted you to see the problem and try to figure out in your own way. And a lot of you, um, I think, probably reasoned through and got the right answer without going through all this ratio and proportion and stuff. But uh, if you got the right answer using it, using a kind of another more direct technique, and maybe some of you out there 
are like mechanics or have a you know great mechanical background and just kind of do can do this math that's fantastic uh, but hopefully you know this uh, you know explanation in terms of ratios and proportions you know maybe strengthen your understanding of the mathematics to solve a simple gear ratio problem by the way gear ratio problems and some of you probably know this and you might be saying hey mr you two math man uh, you know you didn't talk about uh, I, I noticed some of these things here uh, you know the teeth on this uh, uh, the teeth of a gear is these things right here how many teeth so uh, really we can make this problem more complex we can count how many teeth are in this gear and then uh, how many teeth are in this gear we're not going to go that deep but if you're truly studying this let's say as part of a oh, I don't know, physics or an engineering type of class, well, these problems can, can certainly get much more sophisticated. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.